At the end of the training session, participants should know the following objectives about methylene chloride. Methylene chloride is a volatile, colorless liquid with a chloroform-like odor. It's used as a solvent, especially where quick evaporation is needed. Methylene chloride dissolves oils, fats, waxes, resins, and rubber. Methylene chloride is used in paint strippers, as an ingredient in adhesives, as a degreasing agent, in propellant mixtures for aerosols, as an extracting agent in the pharmaceutical industry and to decaffeinate coffee, as well as bathtub refinishing. The most common route of exposure is inhalation or breathing and skin exposure. A secondary route of exposure is ingestion. OSHA considers methylene chloride to be a potential carcinogen. Methylene chloride is also known as MC, dichloromethane, methane dichloride, methylene dichloride, and methylene bichloride. Methylene chloride is heavier than water. The vapor is heavier than air. It is slightly soluble in water and it is a colorless liquid with a chloroform-like smell. Here's a quick knowledge check. Do you know which one is water? Water is lighter, so it's on top. Let's take a look at the OSHA standard for methylene chloride. The standard can be found on OSHA's website. It's part 1910, subpart Z, and standard number 1910.1052. The OSHA standard for methylene chloride covers three of the four industries, the general industry, the shipyard industry, and the construction industry. We are the general industry. Employee exposure and health consequences. The most common exposure is from inhalation and skin exposure. Short-term exposures may cause confusion, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting and headaches. Skin exposure may cause irritation or chemical burns. OSHA allows exposure to methylene chloride. This is called the Permissible Exposure Limit or PEL. The permissible exposure limit is 25 parts methylene chloride per million parts of air. This limit is based on an 8-hour average. The action level is 12.5 for medical surveillance and testing. Employees can be exposed to higher limits, but only for up to 15 minutes. Requirements for regulated areas Establish regulated areas and they must be marked. Multi-employer worksites keep all employers informed and supply appropriate respiratory equipment if needed. OSHA standard requires employers to inform and train employees on hazards including health hazards and to use labels and safety data sheets. Exposure monitoring. Two ways to measure employee exposure are air sampling of breathing zones and medical surveillance of employees with the highest expected exposure. Monitoring can be waived if the data proves that MC levels aren't released above the PEL or STL, or employees are exposed for fewer than 30 days per year. The following chart shows exposure scenarios and the required monitoring activity. Medical surveillance. Medical surveillance must be provided to employees exposed above the PEL or STEL at no cost to the employee, without loss of pay, at a reasonable time and place, and by a qualified person. This is a doctor who's given a copy of the MC standard, the employee's exposure level, job description, and PPE used. Control measures. A hazard is something that has the potential to harm you. Risk is the likelihood of the hazard causing you harm. Control measures help minimize the risk and the hazards. Examples are exhaust ventilation, PPE, 
Work controls such as keeping your face out of the methylene chloride vapor zone. No eating, drinking, or smoking inside the designated area. Respirators are used when exposure is likely to exceed PEL and STEL. Controls are being implemented or installed. Controls are not feasible. Controls are not sufficient and during emergencies. Employers must provide conveniently located washing facilities, an eye wash station, and employees must use the protective clothing and equipment that is provided at no cost to them by the employer. Keep containers tightly closed, protect containers from damage, store containers in a cool, dry, and well-ventilated area, dispose of waste materials promptly and properly, store containers away from direct sunlight, heat sources, and acute fire hazards, and avoid contact with strong oxidizers, caustics, and chemically activated metals. Record Keeping the employer must establish and keep records of all objective data, testing protocol and the results, and data related to the MC material, exposure monitoring including dates of measurements, number, duration, and samples, and medical surveillance, which includes names, social security numbers, and description of duties along with the doctor notes. For additional information, you can visit OSHA, NIOSH, or ask your manager.